Potty training can be really intimidating. If you've never done it before, we just potty trained our three-year-old son and wanted to share a song that Cody made up. This is my husband, Cody. He's never been on a video before, so I'm so excited that he agreed to share the song that he made up for our son um, in hopes that it helps you and gives your little toddler something to focus on as they're learning the new skill of going pee in the potty instead of in their diaper. As a pediatric speech language pathologist with my master's degree in communication disorders and as a mama, I share strategies to help children communicate that are rooted in research by demonstrating activities that work in our real day-to-day -day lives with our real kids on an ordinary Tuesday afternoon at home. I believe that your thoughts matter and your child's thoughts matter. We have two sons under the age of four, so we have a three-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old. And we are both in communication, so I'm mm -hmm. a pediatric speech-language pathologist, and... I work in corporate communication, so I'm always working with language and writing and thinking about how to use words to drive action. Yeah, so we highly value communication in our family, and we're always trying to set our boys up for success in communication by giving them a wide variety of words and songs and language and things that they can connect to in our everyday routines. We knew our three-year-old was ready, and so he threw away his last diaper, and we told him that you're just going to get to be naked for a few days, and we're going to learn how to use a potty. He knew what a potty was and he'd seen them around we had had them out and about in our home no pressure he could play on them or whatever he wanted to do and we also incorporated a timer now i know that sounds pretty intense we didn't do it for the whole three days but for the first day we thought it was helpful and to kind of help him get on a rhythm of using the bathroom and we had a whiteboard where every time he would go we would celebrate and get really excited and write a number and then he could see how he was doing and and kind of record and so as we got toward the end of the three days the song just kind of popped into my mind because as i said I, I work in corporate communications and i'm obsessed with story and trying to think about ways to use words in powerful ways and memorable ways to help people be successful and so this is the song that i thought of and i started kind of humming it to myself at first and we shared it with our son and Adrian thought it was pretty catchy, and so I thought I would share what the song is, and then Adrian can kind of talk about the connection of music and language. Mm -hmm. So the song goes like this. Hold it in your body till you're sitting on the potty. And then the second part goes, waiting on the potty till it comes out of our body. And it's really catchy, and yeah. we found him singing it, humming it, saying it back to us, and we even now, we joke about it all the time. <laughs> and we even say it now, if he has an accident, which mm -hmm. happens, we mm -hmm. even reference it now. Yeah. The reason that songs are so powerful is because for hundreds and thousands of years, communities and cultures have used songs for specific events, or to celebrate, or in times of transition, or grief even. And so this song is something that can be an anchor point for our son and your children to cue their body and their brain to like go to the potty. Oh, this is the potty song. I can, I remember what I did last time when I went potty. I can do that again. And the song gives them a, a cue, like an anchor to remember what to do. And it's fun. It's like a nice way to transition from an activity that they're loving doing. Like for our son, he loves playing with vehicles and tractors and trucks and toys. And so if he's really engrossed in that, he might forget that he needs to go to the bathroom. And so we can sing that song in a playful way instead of being like, time to sit on the potty again, which seems more boring than if you're singing a song and you're excited about it and it's lively. And also it's a song that kind of gets stuck in your head. And so even when he's playing, sometimes he'll be humming that song or he'll just, it'll come to mind throughout the day and that'll cue him also like, oh yeah, I need to, I need to go to the bathroom. And two, I'll say this, if you're in transition and maybe your child communicates, hey, I need to go to the bathroom, this is a song that you could sing with them to kind of, yeah. if, if you need just an extra 30 seconds to make it to the actual potty, this may <laughs> yes. be a way to distract them and you can get to the finish line. Yeah, that's a great point because sometimes they'll start to go and you notice they're starting to go and you're like, wait, 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 but you don't want to scare them and be like, stop peeing. So, so singing the song is like helpful because it gives them a direction of what to do. Like, okay, I'm supposed to hold it in my body and they're learning how that feels to hold it in until they get to the bathroom and they can, they can go. And the second verse is really helpful because for when they're learning how to poop, because I know for some kids it can be really challenging to transition to 
pooping on the potty, it helps yeah. them understand that sometimes we have to wait and sometimes it takes time. Mm -hmm. And you can just hum it if you're in there with them or let them hum it. That can be a way to help them associate. You know, it's okay to take our time. And yeah. a couple other things we do, I came up with this idea of what's called the focus fan. So if they're easily distracted or they're kind of nervous or jittery, you can turn on the fan if your bathroom has one and you can call it the focus fan. So they hear that and it kind of drowns out all the other noise, kind of like a nice, pleasant white noise they can use to really focus on what they're doing. And the focus fan can help you to cue them to just take deep breaths and let, let the poop happen. <laughs> and after we had the song going after three days, he, he got it. I mean, he yeah. really understood it. And what we did from there, um, just a small recommendation, is we did decide to let him go commando. We didn't immediately put underwear on because sometimes it can feel like a diaper to them and it can unravel all of the progress you just made. And so we let him go commando for probably a month or two. Yeah. And then we bought underwear that's a little bit larger size, so it's pretty loose fitting. Mm -hmm. And that way he's comfortable and it doesn't feel like a diaper. So those are some other things that we found to be helpful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, accidents happen, so just know that, you know, there's grace needed. But overall, we felt like this approach was uh, rooted in respect and fun, and the song just was something that came out of it organically. Mm -hmm. So I had heard of a lot of families having great success with buying like little treats or doing um, new toys whenever your child would go to the bathroom, but something about that didn't sit right with us because we wanted him to feel intrinsically motivated to use the bathroom and like the act of going to the bathroom and not eliminating in your diaper is the the gift in itself, you know, just the gift of being able to have that flexibility to be out and about and not have to do diaper changes and not to be all, you know, sitting in your poop and stuff like that. So, yeah. um, with the diaper on, so the value for him was being able to do a new skill and he was motivated intrinsically without the use of any kind of rewards or praise from us. We did celebrate and he was excited. We celebrated with him whenever he would go because it was something he, he had fun doing and we enjoyed that process with him. Um, it was hard, you know, doing the timer every 20 minutes because he would get engrossed in playing and doing an activity and it was kind of hard to pull him away from playtime in order to keep going. Um, but the first day he really was excited to go each mm -hmm. time. He was like, okay, let's see if anything comes out. And really the timer faded yeah. on the second day. I mean, he started to prompt and, and go on his own mm -hmm. and I think for him the celebration of you know making a mark on the whiteboard this is the third time you went and you know, we circle if he peed underlined if he pooped and then circle and underline if he did both was really satisfying for him yeah yeah and one more thing that Cody actually taught him when he was tiny um, whenever he would have a diaper on when he was you know one and two and he would kind of go by himself we could tell he was pooping Cody always said, you can say, I'm pooping, I need privacy. So he learned the word privacy when he was like two. <laughs> I need some privacy. And so um, that was something actually that we thought would be helpful for your children to, to know the word privacy because if they have a babysitter or someone unfamiliar who doesn't really know if they need to help them in the bathroom, your child can say, I need some privacy. Like this is my time to focus and just go on my own and I can do this. Um, and just also for safety reason, reasons, it's good to teach your child to advocate for themselves mm. when they need a private moment um, to do their business. So we know it's really helpful to talk about an approach and philosophy for potty training, but we also wanted to show you some of the tools and accessories that we kind of brought into our cadence that we thought might be of value to you. So we had some friends of ours recommend this. This is a simple potty from Ikea. It's five not, or six dollars. Not very yeah. expensive. It's really easy to clean and you can put them in all your bathrooms and it's really accessible for them yeah. as kids to sit on. It's and, not so scary as a big potty mm -hmm. to sit in. Like, like no stools are involved and it just yeah. helps set them up. If they need to go quickly, you know, they can pull their pants down, their underwear down if they have that and use it pretty easily. Mm -hmm. I think it sets them up for independence. I know some families prefer to just sit on the big potty and that way they're used to it, but I think it allows our son, at least in his personality, to have that independence. He can do it completely on his own now. And, uh, and our second son has now, obviously, mm -hmm. kind of second child syndrome. He will just go sit on it just for fun. He's, yeah. he's not ready. 
but we it's really neat to see him be interested in it and he knows what it's for and even now sometimes he'll tap his diaper and say ah poo poo so he's kind of getting the hang of it by watching mm -hmm. his brother we also got this travel potty to keep in the car or like pop in the stroller it has we got it on amazon and you can just put this in the grass and it can which we've pee. done in yeah. parks and such yes and then um also it flattens out so it's kind of like an insert for a big potty so you can set this on top of a big potty and they can hold on to it so if you're out in a public restroom and you know, the toilets are huge for a little toddler and so you can set this on and they can feel a little bit more stable and secure um he is able to pee on big potties now um, so we don't always bring this with us but it good is to have in a pinch yes. very good to have in a pinch if you're going on a stroller walk to a playground or you're going to visit a friend mm -hmm. or you're going to play outside somewhere that's far away it's really nice to have yes and then the last thing i wanted to mention i share this wipe recipe with all my friends but i haven't shared it with you yet so i wanted to share my mom found this recipe for homemade wipes so we've used this ever since our oldest was born and all you need for this is paper towels coconut oil and some castile soap i'll link all the products that we use um, down below so you can find them and then optional would be like a lavender essential oil so all you do is get a large container you boil three cups of water to sterilize it, and I'll put the recipe below with the exact measurements, but you boil water, then you add the coconut oil in the Castile soap, and then some drops of lavender oil if you'd like, and then once it's cooled down, then you just cut a paper towel roll in half and put it into a container and then pour the mixture on top of it, and you can remove the little paper towel roll from the inside if you want and then just squish the paper towel roll mm. down once it's wet it's really moldable so you push it down and then you can just pull out a wipe and they're really really soft um they're soft they smell nice yeah and, and we've noticed that neither of our boys have really had diaper rashes or yeah. issues with that we just know it's really soft on their hineys <laughs> and it smells nice and it's a much more cost effective way to manage wipes and go into the store and buying those huge packs that by the time you get to the end, they're all dry and nasty anyways. Yeah, and they're, they're expensive. So these, I love knowing exactly what's in them and um, they last a long time. For one half roll, um, I actually marked the date that I made them when our oldest was little because I was like, I wonder how long these are lasting us. So one half of a roll lasted about a month for our son. Now with two boys, we were going through a lot more yeah. wipes. Um, but you can also just pull some out and have a smaller container for your diaper bag if you want some on the go. But they're really soft and nourishing to the skin. So wanted to share that recipe. I'll put the recipe in the description of this video so you can try it out if you'd like. So I'm curious, what has your potty training experience been like? I'd love to know any lessons that you've learned, any things that you would have done differently. In the comment section of this video will be a great place to go for advice from other people who have watched this video. So let us know, have you potty trained? Are you about to? Are you nervous? Do you have any questions? <laughs> um, other people can help you out in the comments. And I wanted to thank you, Cody, for being on Woo! a video. Yay! <laughs> so excited to have him on here and I feel like he could have his own channel with his own expertise and I try to encourage him to do that but I'm gonna stick with her for now this is the first little baby step to get, <laughs> getting you your own YouTube channel <laughs> but thank you for coming on and um, let us know if you have any questions in the comments below this video is part of a long playlist of videos that I've created for you to help your toddler learn how to talk. I highly recommend watching this next one first. I'll link it somewhere above here and in the description box. It's a simple bedtime routine that you can do with your child that helps them learn about 600 words or more per day. Doing just a simple little tweak to your nighttime routine when you're about to lay them down. See you in the next video.